and we're live! Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew Gaming Video Channel on Twitch Streaming Live. Um, glad you can join me today. Darcy won't be joining me, it'll just be a solo thing today. Um, he'll be back next Friday. And if you tuned in a couple days ago, um, on Wednesday, um, Tanya was with me and we played three, three games. A Star, um, Elevators a Mess, and Assembloids, and had a good time. And I just posted the, that video along with the past two live streams up on YouTube if you missed those. Um, and the one with Darcy, I did a bunch of video um, audio fixing so that it actually sounds good. Um, but I've got the audio all fixed now, and if anybody uh, can tell me, just to make sure, still paranoid a little bit, whether it's still on time. Clapping is on time. Yes? Good to go. Let me know if it's not. Um, so what we're going to play today um, is two games. I like to just revisit games when I'm playing by myself um, to see um, if I can do some improvements and get a little bit better at these games. So today we're going to play two games. Uh, one is Elevators A Miss, which you can see is this the right direction? Yes. You can see up there <laughs> on the screen. And um, hopefully the voice is loud enough and the music. I'm going to actually turn down the music a little bit and turn me up a little bit. A little bit more. Check, check, check. Yep, that should be better. Okay. And hopefully the music from the game isn't too loud. Maybe I'll turn it up a bit more. Um, but you guys out in the chat can let me know how the volumes are for you. Um, there should be some music playing from Elevators and this in the background right now. Um, and I'm going to play Wall Jump Ninja again because I think I can do better. I made it to level 50, room 58 uh, last time. And also this time, uh, I am going to plug in the Atari box because a bunch of these games that I've been playing... Um, use the Atari Vox. Let me switch to uh, full here. I think I can turn up the brightness one more than this. It's a little bit dark. Let me just check. So that's yeah, that's a little bit better. Um, so this is the first time um, I actually am using the Atari box. I bought it a while, a while ago, but never got around to plugging it in. So it's a little add-on device that can do a number of things. It can output um, voice through the back there, through the port. Um, we won't be plugging that in today. I'm not sure if this uses... Um, uh, uh, this game, Elevators and Misuses the Voice, I don't think so. I didn't see anything in the manual when I was reading it, but it does save high scores, I think, because it's got a little bit of uh, memory in here to save the high scores. I'll have to do some reading before next show about it to see how it does that, whether there's a battery in here or... I don't know, because it has to save high scores when it's off, so there has to be some sort of battery or... A, yeah, a battery or rechargeable... Um, battery in here, um, powered, and it plugs into port 2 of the 2600, and this also works with the Vectrex, so that's very exciting to give the Vectrex voice, um, but uh, clever people have already worked out um, how to do voice on the Atari 2600, and back in the day voice was already in games on the Vectrex. So it says designed by Richard Hutchinson, and we're going to go ahead and plug this in to the 2600 so uh, let me uh, switch over to that and let me turn it off and plug it back and plug it in so I've plugged it in turned it on I doubt there's going to be any major change in what we see see it doesn't it doesn't show anything different on the screen. It doesn't say Atari box or anything. Um, 
but uh, we will see if it saves the high scores between turning it off and turning it back on. There's no high scores right now. Uh, and also today, I am wearing my Pitfall socks, so I know that I will be doing... There we go. Can you see it? Pitfall? Uh, hard to bend that way. Anyway, pit, Pitfall. So I know I'll get some uh, decent scores, I think. So let's get to it. I'm going to turn up the volume on the TV a little bit. Up to the two. Let's see how that does. And, uh, yeah. Let's get some gaming going. And, uh, see if the Atari box does anything exciting in this game. It may not be, uh, visible of what it does. Yeah, okay, music's going through. Oh, yeah, 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 I was gonna work my way up, because last time I started on this, um, on the normal setting, and I found it accelerated to a pretty hard level fairly quickly. Um, so I'll play this game out, and then I'll go to start on um, the easy, easy level, just for fun. See, that was dumb. That was just a dumb mistake. Um, because this one starts with all... I don't think I've... it's possible for me to sit in between two elevators. It's just not going to happen. I always need the room of one elevator um, to be able like a whole section. I know on the, not beginners, but the s second highest, or second lowest uh, level, uh, you are able to stop moving. Um, on the easy level, oh my god, doing terrible here. On the easy level, uh, you don't stop moving, just like right now. Oof, that was really close. On the easy level, you don't stop moving. The second to easiest level, you can stop moving. And the third one, like this one, which is normal, uh, you don't stop moving at all. You have to kind of wiggle the joystick back and forth. Um, last time I played, which was on Wednesday, I made it to level three. And I don't think I did very well. Oh god. Woof. I think I could do better. Not if I do that. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Uh, no! <sighs> Terrible. Was, problems with, um... The slow elevators, the one I just got killed on, is that, um... If they're in your way, they're not getting out of your way, so you really have to make sure that you're darting across the screen. That was just dumb. Darting across the screen when they're definitely out of your way, like right now. So it gives you lots of time to clear the area. See? Shouldn't have gone. Now I'm in trouble. Ooh, just barely. And the last top level. Of course, it gets easier because you have a whole length of elevator to make it. Actually, I'm not doing too bad. Level 3 already. Oh, good mix of super slow and super fast elevators here. This is going to be challenging. I still have four lives left. There's two slow ones now. Maybe this isn't too bad. Maybe I was just being a little... Uh... We'll see. A little hard on myself there. Um, I've reconfigured the studio here. You probably can't notice, except the only difference is the camera's off to the side a little bit. Because um, before the studio, the uh, you probably notice where my eyes are. It looked like we were looking up at the ceiling before when we were playing these games, because the TV is mounted like up there. Um, but now, I've got a smaller TV 
that is more at eye level, because it looked just weird. It looked like we were looking up at the ceiling. Like, the eye line was crazy. Um, but now, I've just got a TV at eye level, so that it um, looks a little bit more natural. It was just... It was very weird. So the options were, like, to remount my TV a lot lower, or to put this smaller TV, which isn't that much smaller, um, just on the table, which actually helped, because I've also got the table pushed way back to the wall, um, which we do have to get up and change the cartr cartridges with now, um, rather than just lean over. That's not a big deal. It's only done once every, um, like half an hour when, uh, when I'm gaming, so that's not a big deal. So I made it to level four, which is excellent. Couldn't make it to level four last time. Now I've got more of the hang of it. You kind of bide your time at the slow elevators, and those are kind of breaks. But you've got to make sure that they're not going to crush you, like that one. Now I've got a semi-slow one next to a slow one. There we go. See? Now I'm getting a bit more of the strategy down. Before, I couldn't quite get it, but now I'm a little bit more understanding of what can be done with the fast and slow elevators and how to use them to your advantage. See? There you go. There are breaks. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, I'm not going to set it to the easy levels. This is totally easy enough. If you can make it to level 4 on the setting um, of an Atari game, then you don't need to go any easier. See, level 5. This is pretty much the same. Two slow elevators. Oh, no, it's not. Look at that speedy one. Which is good because it gets out, gets out of the way quick. Um, but it also will crush you. Now, two speedy elevators in a row. That is going to be a problem. But luckily, I have not encountered that yet. Nice. Two elevators in sync. Uh, there we go. Go! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oof. Good. Come on, move it, move it, move it. Good. See, the middle part is the hardest because you only have a half a length of the elevators going by before you get in trouble. I haven't died in a long time. There we go. <laughs> if you want to um, jump in and chat. Um, you can just go... Well, if you're on Twitch, there's a chat right, built right in. I guess unless you're using... Actually, even if you're using um, Chromecast or uh, something to cast it to your TV, you can still use your handheld device to do the chat. Just pop in and say hi. Oh. You jinxed it. I did. As soon as I said, Oh, I haven't died in a while, like two levels, I died immediately. Probably because I was not paying attention. At least I'm up at, oh no, this is the worst time to move. I should be looking ahead at the slow elevator. Now it's moved out of the way. Now I can go over. Okay. Now I can move over. And now I can move up. Hey, hey, Gilbertson, 1977. Thank you for joining the stream and checking it out. Oh, 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 that was a bad mistake. There we go. Okay, now it's not a problem. Oh, don't go yet. Slow elevator's still there. Now there's room, and the other one's slow, and it's going down. And level six. See, I knew I should I should come back to this game and replay it, because I knew I could do better than what I did on, on Wednesday. That was just, that was embarrassing, making it to level three. That was just not good at all. Now I have two fast elevators. Really, only one slow, and well, the ones on the left is semi-slow at a slow. Uh, so I've got my chat down here. So if you see me looking over, um, it's the chat down there. Okay. No. Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on. Ooh, this one. Yeah, this one is going to be tough in the middle. Tough, tough, tough. So I have two lives left. This is, this is a super fast one. Okay. I can 
do it. One guy left. One extra life left. Ever notice that on, um, I don't know if they've standardized it yet, but on old, these old games, not this old game, because this isn't old, but, uh, your life, your life counter. It, right now, this one says zero, which there's only one interpretation for when it says zero lives. Is that you have no lives left, and if you're playing, that is your last life. So made to level six, but let's try it again. But if you, if it says one life left, there's a bit of debate, right? Because is it the life you're playing on right now? Or do you have one extra life after you die? Right? It's like, oh, you died. Oh, no, you have an extra life. No, you can't, you can't make it underneath an elevator. Not even if it's going, like, slow. It turns around immediately. Why am I dying on the first level? This is terrible. I want to reset it, but I won't. So we made it to level six last time. This is... Whoa! I usually don't make that. And this is one of those games... Old games... Old games in the arcade used to be, um, like in the, in the, you know, 70s and early 80s, there didn't used to be levels, per se. It was more like they just kept speeding up and maybe adding a couple more uh, enemies in. Ooh, that was really close. Uh, a couple more enemies in and just getting faster and faster. And that's how they progress the levels. Um, and then, and also, it's terrible. And and then they had also levels, but um, see, I'm not, not doing so well. These socks are not helping. These pitfall socks. Maybe because this is nothing like pitfall. <laughs> I should wear more appropriate socks. Maybe like, um, I have Freeway Socks um, from the 2600 game Freeway. That would kind of be more applicable. This is kind of like a Frogger Freeway getting across a road, getting across a, uh, a street kind of game, except you're getting across the floor uh, of a hotel and trying to avoid elevators instead of trucks. It's definitely a certain genre of game. I don't know what genre that would be called. Avoid the things? Like, like there are... Oh, I almost made it. There's definite genres, like platformers are a genre, shoot 'em ups are a genre, first person shooters are a genre. Um, I mean, th these kind of genres, this kind of genre doesn't really exist anymore. Um, because it's only really for old school games. Um, that was a mistake. But what would this? What? What good name would be? What name would be good for this type of genre? Um, crossing the road. Crossing the road. Um, get get across. Genre, get across. Something to do with crossing. Getting across. Or avoid. Avoid the obstacles. An avoid game. Because this one, this game doesn't have any shooting. So it's not a shooter at all, in any sense of the word. You can't destroy things. A new, I guess a new equivalent would be um, like a sneak game, you know, where you try and avoid detection. You're not, you're not trying to kill anything. You're not trying to shoot anything. Um, one of those, um, that was a bad decision. I should be going across when they're at the top, not when they're at the bottom. That's what 
when I'm at the bottom. Yeah, so maybe maybe along those lines, a sneaking, sneak kind of genre. Oh my god. This is a bad time to... That elevator is not in the right position. Okay. Wait till the slow ones are at the top. Okay. Go now. Perfect. No, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait for this elevator to go past. Welcome everybody who's watching now. Um, just to let you know, I usually do these on every Friday around two o'clock. And I'm usually joined by another person, but this week he's not here. He will be here next week. Go, go, go. And we'll be... Actually, I can tell you that. Next week, we'll be looking at um, some work-in-progress homebrew games. So these are games that are not... Either not done... Well, not done. Um, and especially not released on cartridge yet. So usually people post um, post them in the Atari Age forums. Damn it! <laughs> As they work on them and they get uh, feedback from all the members on either looking for glitches or um, doing play testing um, or asking for suggestions on what to add to the game. Usually it's more along the lines of playtesting and looking for glitches because um, people will have lots of different types of 2600 systems that the person making the game may not have. Um, and especially systems from overseas like PAL, so they could, like if they're developing it in North America, they may only have a, an, an NTSC system. Developing, developing, oh, that was close. Developing it on, um, on an emulator is not the same as um, playing it on an actual system hooked up to an actual TV, um, especially like a PAL TV, um, where it's very sensitive to the number of scan lines, and if you go over the number of scan lines, the, the picture will start scrolling, or if it's just you know, something that is generally regarded as a bug, like, of the system, that you can only see on an actual TV in an emulator. The emulator, like Stella, hasn't been um, perfected yet to get every single real-world situation. Um, so you need the playtesters from around the world to help you out with that. Come on. So it's very helpful. But, um, and also just, you know, generally playing the game. And usually these games are developed by just one person. Hurry up! Hurry up! There we go. <laughs> and, um, they don't have all the resources of, of a huge company, of course. Oh my god. Oh my god. I know it. So, they need, they need help from people. Um, so, what we'll be doing is playing some work in progress games but mostly ones that are very near to the end of their um, development so that it's not like a bug ridden super bug ridden because who wants to just watch a bug ridden game being played and you just run into a bunch of bugs and it won't be very enjoyable maybe it will be enjoyable maybe you can like, kind of find secret secret areas that you're not supposed to do supposed to get to. Oh god. Uh, zero. Zero. Okay. Let's... Let's... Actually, let's try out the um, Atari Vox. Atari Key thing. And see if it remembers my score. So, that score was uh, 2800. And my high score is 4201, which I'm sure that was the last game. So let's turn it off and turn it back on. And see if it remembers um, the score. And it does. That's so awesome. I should have plugged this in a long time ago. 
because there's um, a game that we played last Friday, which was Anguna, which is like an RPG for the Atari 2600. And it's a long game, so you don't... And, and it does have a code if you don't have an Atari key. That's like 40 characters, I think, that you have to type in. Um, so I don't really want to type in all those characters, but I do have it saved on video. So at first I will type in the characters, but now that I've got the Atari key um, plugged in, I won't have to save, but of course I might. Depends on its saving system, because sometimes you want to have like a save point where you're doing really well, and maybe you start doing badly and then die. You don't want to start from that spot. You want to start from an earlier spot. So the save key will only help you at the point where you're turning it off and turning back on again later. Um, okay, so what I was going to do, it's on normal right now. So I'm going to start it on the easy level and work my way up and see how it progresses harder. I know you only start with two elevators on the easy, so let's try that. A uh, child, I mean. So I should be able to just run pretty much straight across on this one. Well, not straight across, I guess. But a lot faster. These, these elevators are really slow. If I die on this, feel free to completely chastise me. Okay, back to the work in progress videos that we're going to be doing next Friday. Oh! Go ahead, chastise me. <laughs> I thought I'd sneak under. Um, uh -huh. terrible. Oh! That's something I didn't notice. Your time goes down abnormally fast if you press the run button on this, on the child. I didn't notice if it was, did that on the normal. I don't think it did. It's definitely penalizing you for... Oh, you'll go down right to zero if you run the whole time. Oh no, it just loops. What? What? Wait a second. Oh, okay. It goes to zero per level. Okay. So, I'm already at zero, so I'll, I'll just run. Okay, so, if you don't run, it goes down at a normal pace, and then resets to 99. But if you do run, you're not going to have enough left at the end to get any kind of score. Okay. So, eh, I don't care about running. I just want to see how this progresses, actually, on the child mode. So it's got, start off with two elevators, now it's gone to three. Oh, it just jumps up to six, seven, sorry, seven elevators, right away. So, child <laughs> only delays the pain, really, for two levels. Once you're on level three, it's more, Pretty much like level one on normal. And I'm guessing that's kind of the same for the second difficulty type level. It's a really dark level, eh? Glad I don't have to play around with the colors on the um, on the output to the streaming, because it looks it looks just perfect. It looks great. Um, okay, with the, back to the work in progress for next Friday. I keep forgetting. I keep getting distracted. Um, if anybody has any suggestions on which work in progress games for the 2600 um, that you would like to see us play, please just um, leave a suggestion. I know I can't do that. Why did I do that? Just leave a suggestion um, anywhere on any of my social media platforms or on the social media sites. Um, so we've got Instagram, Twitter, um, Facebook, um, obviously Twitch, which you're watching this on, or YouTube, watching it later. Um, the best resource for that is either like Atari Age, Facebook, or some of the homebrew, Atari homebrew, uh, Facebook groups. Those are good resources. 
um, for looking up because people post them all the time on there. Um, the best, the best resource is the Atari Age forums. So if you're not a part of that, which you probably are, watching this, um, this, is, this is pretty niche, pretty niche video streaming. Atari 2600 Homebrew. So you're probably already a fan of it, or maybe you've dropped in because you remember the Atari 2600 fondly way back in the day. Um, but either way, those are some resources you can check out to make suggestions. Or you can uh, make suggestions right here in the chat if you're watching it live. Uh, one that I've already chosen is Plague. So we're going to be playing three. Three games. Um, so one is Plague. And um, we've already got some suggestions coming in on the Facebook um, posts that I made. And, and also you could go to um, my Facebook um, page, which is uh, Zero Page Homebrew, and uh, just suggest it there, or just message me on there, because um, I put up um, a post today about that. So you can just post it right under that, if you like. Can't do it. I cannot wiggle between two levels. So wait till the slow ones are out of the way. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oof, that was close. Come on, come on, come on. Wait till the slow ones are out of the way and then time it up with the fast one. So you can make it under a fast one if you're in the middle or at the ends or anywhere there. But not if it's at the bottom and you're at the bottom. You can't make it past that at any time. Um, and also, if you want to be informed of when we're going to do live streams, um, probably the best. All those things are really good to get informed on when we're going to do live streams, like Instagram, Twitter, and I didn't even say what my handles were, but it is Zero Page Homebrew with a spelled out, Z-E-R-O, yes, I'm Canadian, Z-E-R-O-P-A-G-E, -E homebrew, H-O-M-E, it's hard to spell while you're playing, H-O-M-E-B-R-E-W, that could be like a sobriety test, please play this Atari 2600 game while trying to spell out words, and you can't just sit there, whoa, this is like actual level 6. Like it's ramped up. So I don't know how this is child. <laughs> this is not a child level. This is almost as hard as level 6 on the normal. It just ramps up a little bit slower. But it gets right back up to the hard levels. I would say maybe this isn't level 6 of the normal, but maybe level 5? Oh, I should have gone. In the end... Oh, look at how many lives I have, though. That's a definite advantage. Not if I waste them, like that. That's a definite advantage. Oh, 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 oh. oh I should have stayed more to the middle there. Will I make it to level 7? I think I will. Just have to not be an idiot about it. There we go. It's easier. There's a clear path. Um, and also, these change at all. These didn't seem to change. There's two fast ones still. No, they didn't change. Or not much anyway, not noticeably. Um, oh, there's another um, edited video I'm working on right now, uh, which should hopefully hopefully be out by the end of next week. Um, it is the video of... Oh, that was foolish. I could have made that. Um, the video of me putting together, or upgrading, my Atari 2600 
to RGB because the Atari 2600 um, by default its video and audio output is through composite not composite, RF what am I thinking? it's hard to play and do this at the same time these games are intense this one's not too intense but it's intense enough that I screw up sometimes one life left it's my last life I did make it to level 7 but it is child ugh Okay, hold that thought. Let's go to Novice. Now this is going to be really easy. Now I should not die very much on this, because look, I can stop moving in the middle of a, a level, and there's always enough room between elevators. And I've never made it up to a level where there's more elevators um where there's elevators and not enough room. It always seems to max out at seven. So I don't know if they'll put in more at higher levels. What was I talking about? <laughs> Lost my train of thought again. Uh, oh yeah, Atari 2600. And when it came out, actually not when it came out, it's always been, there's never been an upgraded 2600. Um, the video and audio output Oh my god, that was terrible. The video and audio output were carried over RF. And if you don't know what RF is, it is the same wire, kind of wire, that um, cable TV is carried over. It's like the really thin prong in the middle with kind of a bolt around, and you screw it on. I don't know if there's not too many um, people who have cable nowadays, but even satellite uh, uses the same kind of um, connector. It's the one thin wire with the screw on around it, like a bolt. Um, and audio and video are carried over the same line um, with RF. And so that's what was outputted for the Atari 2600. And you would plug it into your TV, into the back of it, or by using what are you doing? Uh, using um, antenna prongs, various ways. But uh, if you had a really old TV, it would plug into the rabbit ear antenna. Let's see if I can. Yep, there we go. Oh, it's a tight fit. It's like a pixel fit, but you can do it. Um, so that's how they were hooked up, and it wasn't a very clean output. There, there's a lot of interference, very fuzzy, very low resolution. Um, like the audio and video would bleed, the colors all were carried on the same um, piece of wire. So, very just a very poor implementation because if you look at cable TV it's it looks great or it looked great I mean it's standard definition um, carried over RF um, back in, back in the day around the same time and same same with um, antenna TV it looked fine it looked fine on newer TVs it doesn't look fine when you plug in the RF so something needed to be done to upgrade this um, so the next step of evolution of home, you know, cabling is something called uh, composite. And with composite, it separated each each successive step kind of separates out one thing. Um, with composite, it carries the video and audio on separate wires. So if you've ever seen a composite cable. Um, Sometimes, if it's color-coded, it's usually yellow for video, and then white and red for the left and right audio. And if it's just um, and if it's just mono output, then it'll be either you know white or red or maybe even black for just the mono audio signal. Um, so they're 
and then the next one up from that, um, from the composite, is either... Oh, what's happening here? What? Okay, that was just a big flash. Uh, cut out for a bit. Is the two different standards of RGB or component. And what that does is takes... Oh, actually, there's one more bet between before that. Um, it's actually S-Video. And S-Video separates out, if I remember correctly... Um, ooh. The color on one and the luminance on another wire. So it separates it into two. So the brightness on one and the color on another, so that if you hook it up incorrectly, or there's a way to hook it up so that you get black and white if you only hook up one part of it, and uh, what happens if you only hook up the other one? But if you hook up two, of course, it, it equals together to um, color. And then it separates out the color into three lines, which is... RGB or component, which are very uh, similar. Um, RGB separates the colors out the uh, red, green, and blue, and the component separates out, out into... Let's see if I can remember the acronyms. Y... YB? YR? That's close. Damn it. <laughs> Still have nine lives. How is that possible? Must give you extra life every thousand points, I think. I can't remember. Anyway, back up to nine again. It's very forgiving, uh, very forgiving so far. We'll see. I'm only in level five. The fact that you can just stop in between elevators, you're like completely safe at all times. So, um, RGB was not popular here. Actually, it, I don't think it even... Oh, I thought it was safe there. I don't think it even made it to North America. Um, it was... really quite popular in Europe. Um, where it was carried over something called SCART, which is this big, huge, chunky video plug. It's like a, a metal... a metal wide plug with like 20-something... Um, prongs? About 20. can't remember off the top of my head right now. Um, and so they had that standard, and even TVs had it, had it built in. Um, and it was, it was quite popular. So some of the game systems came out with that. Um, like the Super Nintendo and the Genesis had, uh, RGB output built right into it. You just had to have the right connector. And in North America, we had the uh, component. And not many things actually outputted component. No game systems, not very many game systems did. I know the, um, the GameCube did. I don't know if, uh, I don't think Genesis or Super Nintendo had a component output cable. You can let me know if they did. Um, but I don't think so because I think I would have had one by now. But um, anyway, sorry, got distracted by a pop-up on my screen. Just dismiss that. There we go. Back in the chat. So level six now. Okay, back to back to my story about cabling. Isn't that exciting? Um, so here we had component, and mostly it was used for DVD players. I think. I mean, I remember that's what I used it for mostly. Um, I guess some cable boxes and TV boxes had component output, but 
not many people used it or were even aware of it. That and not too many TVs had it. Um, so it was really not very popular at all. The mini game system didn't have it by default. Um, so you won't find it on too many TVs. Um, the one I'm playing on does have it. Actually, the one I'm playing on has so many inputs. It's got VGA. It's got all the way from RF up to VGA and, and HDMI. It's got all of them. It's so good. Not, um, not SCART slash RGB. Um, but anyway, the great thing about SCART is that a couple, a lot of game systems around um, the mid-90s have it output by default. Um, so, you can get a lot of um, SCART cabling for like the Super Nintendo and Genesis, and then get converter boxes that upgrade SCART to HDMI. And you can buy them for as... Hey, Arena Foot, welcome! Arena Foot just said he made it. Thank you for joining us again. I was just uh, discussing cabling and all the different different uh, levels of cabling for different... Oh, that was dumb. Different game systems. Um, so when I first started getting to SCART um, for game systems, I started with Super Nintendo and uh, Sega Genesis. Um, because those were ready-made for outputting. You could just buy a cable and a $30 SCART to HDMI um, up converter. And it works just great. I mean, it's it's not perfect, but it's it gives a really nice output. Um, so that's a really um, easy way to uh, dip your toes into the water for uh, RGB output. So... I did that and played with that for a while and then got, but there is a downside to that $30 up converter for SCART, of course anything you're going to get for $30 that has to do with video is not going to be the best thing in the world, is that video games rely on something called latency. And latency is the time between where you give an input to the game system through the game controller. Like, I'm using a Sega Genesis DB9 uh, input controller that works on Atari 2600 and a thousand other game systems. On um, a thousand other game systems back in the, from 80s to mid 90s, mid 90s, it goes back to Atari 2600, to Commodore 64, to any, a lot of the Atari lines um, and Sega Genesis as well. And it was very popular because nobody put a patent on the DP9, which was awesome because you can get so many different controllers. Um, so you have a huge variety of controllers to choose from, which is, gives the advantage of being able to use a Sega Genesis controller on an Atari 2600. That was dumb. Uh, you love that elevator of mess. I, I do. It's really great, simple, kind of action-y, platform-ish game. And I don't think that I played it to its fullest extent on the day, um, on Wednesday, on Wednesday's broadcast. And if you missed Wednesday's broadcast, I've posted it on YouTube now, in all its wonderful glory. Um... Anyway, back to... Oh, I get up so sidetracked. I was like, I'm in controllers, DB9 controllers now. Uh, back to video. Okay. Oh, yes, latency. Latency, the time between when you press a button on a controller, and that's how I got sidetracked, to when you see the action being shown on the screen of the video game. Now, with this video game and my setup, I press a button, and it's instant, like no time. You can't, you can't distinguish an amount of um, lag, any kind of lag, between when you press a button and when an action goes on the screen. So when I press left for um, the character on the screen, it moves left immediately. And that's, of course, what you want. 
you don't want any kind of lag, whether it's from the programming side. Wow, that is hard to look at. <laughs> Yellow elevators on bright green. Um, but when you get a $30 up converter, oh my god, $30 up converter, you start introducing lag because it's $30, because it has to process the RGB um, SCART signal into HDMI. So it has to, you know, process, change this line by line drawn um, analog signal into a full frame of video and then send the full frame of video. I gotta start using my running. Send this full frame of video to the, um, through the out, to the output on the HDMI um, output. That was silly. I can't even make it that fast running. There's only two levels there. Two guys left. This is a lot harder than I thought being able to stop, but it's like a different game. Um, okay. So the $30 one, it's fine. It's fine. The lag is almost imperceptible. But on some very high um, speedy action games, say you're playing Street Fighter or something where you need precision timing, you need to react to what's going on on the screen. This game, not so much. You could probably introduce, um, ah, my dress got caught on it. Um, you could probably introduce a fair amount of lag and it'd be okay. And you can kind of adjust yourself to that where you go, uh, I know there's this much lag. I can, I can uh, make it if I just press it a little bit early, or I know that it's not timed up perfectly. Um, but some games that doesn't work for, so you can't use that $30, you know, SCART to HDMI up converter. So what you want to get is something that's, is that my last life? It is. So what you want to get is something that's a little bit higher standard. And unfortunately, the little bit higher standard is a huge leap in price. There's a couple uh, options out there. Um, one is ready-made, one for gamers specifically made for them, and it's called the Frame Meister, and it's a Japanese product. Um, what I'm going to do... Actually, doesn't remember all the... Because um, you did also miss um, Arena Foot. I plugged in the uh, Atari Vox into part two of my Atari 2600 now, which is exciting. Now it'll save scores. So now I can come back to these games and know how well I did. Um, so this should save the scores when I turn it off and turn it back on. So turn it off, turn it back on. And it should have all my scores, except for expert, because I don't have an expert score. I didn't play expert. So normal. There we go. 4,200. Expert, nothing. Child, 3,200. Novice, 8,200. There you go. That's awesome. So now I can come back to this game and have the scores and know what I need to beat. But we're going to move on. To back to Wall Jump Ninja because I want to give it a third go again and see if I can beat um, my score of level 58 because I'm pretty sure I can. Um, and I don't know if this has a Var Atari Vox support. It doesn't say on it. Usually people put a little symbol. Um, actually, I'm going to get a score in Expert before I leave because now that I have the Atari Vox key, it's kind of cool that I can keep these scores. There we go. Oh my god, this is like level seven. <laughs> On your oh, look at the time go down too. Oh my god. And oh, now I have to get used to not stopping again. It's not too bad. Ugh. Okay. Um, back to up converting RGB to HDMI. So the other two professional. Professional. Um, not professional. 
because you're not really using this for professional purposes, is one called Frame Meister, which is an out of the box kind of ready to go um, setup. And then there's a more independent one called OSSC, which requires a little bit more fiddling on behalf of the user. I can't see. Now I have to remember I can't stop in the middle of uh, doing a run. I have to wait, make sure that there's some slow elevators out of the way and not going to get in my way. Um, so I have uh, I bit the bullet and bought a Frame Meister. Now the thing with the Frame Meister is that it, oh my god, why did I do that? There's an elevator in the way. Is that it is a Japanese system. It's not, it's not SCART. It is, it is RGB, but it's not SCART. And there's two system, <laughs> two um, systems, I guess standards. Two standards for RGB output. And one of them is the European system, and one of them is the Japanese system. Um, the European system is called SCART. Oh, bad timing. The European system is called SCART. That was just dumb. And the Japanese system is called JP21. Now, they both go over the same... Like, the, sa the connector is exactly the same for both. Like, it looks exactly the same. It's just wide, wide metal output. But, it's wired completely differently. Which is no end to frustration. So, you, by looking at it, you can't tell. You have to know if this cable is, a, is SCART or JP21. And also, because... Oh my god. Because it's wired differently, there are some power... I had to go for it. Actually, yeah, I would have. I would have died. Um, there are some lines that are can't go over them when they're at the bottom. I have to remember that. Go over them when they're at the top. So there are some lines that are powered, and if you run these powered lines over something that's not expecting power, I'm not going to make it. Look at all these fast elevators. Four fast elevators in a row? Five? This is where I die. This is where I die in level two on expert. At least I've got a score on the board. Yours is still, Arena Foot's still 47. Well, maybe we can trade off secrets to improve both of our scores. Um, but I'll wait for, did I get it? Okay, 777, a terrible score for Expert. But look look what I had to contend with. Five, five fast-moving elevators, crazy. Okay, let's switch over to Wall Jump Ninja. How does this work? Oh my god, that's awesome. Can it focus that close? It can. Oh, I can balance it on the edge of my camera. Because um, I've got a, a camera rig set up. I wish I could show you, but I can't. But anyway. Is that too close to focus? No, it is in focus. Well, almost. It's like almost in focus. It's like right at the edge of its focal range looks a little bit blurry in the middle, but the wall jump is uh, is fine. I'm just going to make sure my... I'm going to just make sure that my sink is still good. Sorry, it's going to take a second. I'm just so paranoid after like three or f Oh yeah, it's right on time. Anyway, let's get back to this. Um... So let's switch out the game from Elevator Miss. Wall Jump Ninja. That sound of a cartridge going in just makes me so happy. Let's turn that down. It is in sync. Perfectly in sync. I found the magical number to get everything in sync now for the video game and the camera. It's awesome. Let me just put this 
elevate um, elevators a miss on the end. It's just so cool that this works. I'm going to use this for lots of things now. I mean, it's just barely out of focus. Maybe I can move the camera back a bit. Let me try that. There we go. Oh, that's so awesome. That's awesome. Oh, now you can see camera equipment. One second. There we go. That's better. Yep, now it looks good. That's great. You can't see me at all. Where am I? <laughs> anyway, there I am. Uh, the sound of the sound of an Atari cartridge going into an Atari that clunk just brings back waves of nostalgia. I don't know if it does for anybody else out there. Um, let's switch over. There we go. Wall Jump Ninja is on the screen. It's happening. Oh, we got to beat level 58 and continue on with the story of RGB and the Frankmeister. <laughs> so, where was I? There's two standards. And also, I wonder if this keeps score. Hmm. We'll try it out. We'll try it right away. We'll do my, we'll do a game, and then we'll turn it off and turn it back on. Um, okay, so there's two standards. Oh, I love this game so much. First time I saw this game, I was like, oh, this, this is exactly the type of game that I love. Great, beautiful, colorful graphics, responsive... Um, very responsive game, fun little power-ups, just, just beautiful, simple concept. Um, just enough danger to make it hard, lots of bonus things, just, it can't get any better than this. And just the fact that it's a one-button game adds, adds to it its awesomeness. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. It's just so good. Okay, so there's two two standards for RGB. I think I'll get the N, so that's easy. I'll hold off on the J. Um, so there's JP21 for Jap Japan. There's things coming up on my screen here. And SCART for Europe. Now, uh, the simple solution is that you get, um, you have to keep everything labeled, or you're going to blow something up, that's for sure. Oops, got the J. Or you're going to blow something up, here come the plumb off, and I die immediately. Okay, so room 45. I'm going to turn it off and turn it back on again. Why somebody wouldn't program a game now without support for, um, how come my TV can't see it? Oh, there we go. No. Oh, well, that's okay. This may be programmed a little bit before. Oh, what, 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 what year was this? No. I mean, people should always program for, um, the Atari box. I, I mean, it, it must be a simple, just write to a certain, um, line, a certain, um, memory address, a number, and it saves it. But anyway, um, so to keep to keep it all straight, make sure your cables are all labeled, which I have mine very, very labeled. And to convert from European to Japan, or Japan to European um, standard, you can just get a, a conversion cable and it just kind of rewires um, the wire in the middle of the cable and so you're good to go. But so the Frame Meister only accepts um, JP21 and the Super Nintendo, well the North American and the European Super Nintendo and the Genesis accept the Euroscart. I guess it depends on which cable you get. But anyway, you have to make sure that you get the right cable to work with 
the Frame Meister when you get it. And unfortunately, the Frame Meister costs around $500 or more, depending on where you get it. And the import taxes, I think in Canada, it came up to like 600 or 650 or something crazy Canadian. It was not a fun, fun day. But, but, the quality of output is unbelievable. It's just crystal clear. It is beautiful output. Super responsive. Oh my god. I have to concentrate for a second. Um, crystal clear. Like, it makes the Atari... Um, Alright. The Atari's output just like large, crisp blocks. I need the J now. Or the A. Please, please, please. Yes! New record. My screen is going crazy. I can't see. Oh my god, I couldn't see. Something went nuts. Oh well, I made it to 65. I think there's a limited number of games that can use the Atari box. There's only a certain number of slots. <sighs> Ooh, that's deadly. So do you have to, like, kind of coordinate with other programmers to make sure you're not going over their slots? Or does it just... Or can you check how many slots are filled? Um, I mean, that would be the best way. It just has a stack. And it would have to... And if it did work in a stack format, the key would have to remember what pointer was on the stack, but also which game was associated which the, with the pointer, at which point you'd still have to keep a registry of, like, um, elevator a mess is game three. And it would only look for game three, and then write to that, but, and then it would have to be a public kind of agreement that don't use game slot three. Um... Otherwise, how would that work? It would always have to have a registry. Or the other way, which would kind of suck, but be maybe better, because you don't have to use a registry, is still, still have... No, that still wouldn't work. No, it could work. It could work. Because you could have a, up to 255, but then you still have to rep not replicate which game number you're self-assigning your game to. So you still have to say slot number three for elevator and miss. And it would look through and see if that slot was already taken. And it would look where to put the new score into. Because you could just keep adding it up. We have to get permission from Albert or the creators of the box. Okay. I guess that's the only way. So... Okay, so if you don't get permission and program it to use the Atari box, how does that work? Because I'm sure you can program it without asking permission, unless there's some sort of encoded key that is given to you for your program. But then, in that case, you could disassemble Elevator's Amiss and find out their encrypted, encrypted key, or their special key, and use it for yourself. But then, you would be promptly ostracized <laughs> from the Atari community. Okay, my TV went absolutely crazy when it did the warping, which is very disconcerting because I have had trouble with this TV when something happened previously as well in another game that I was just trying out while setting up. So, I may have to play with the output on this TV. It should just be getting, you know, a straight HDMI signal from the Frame Meister. Um, ooh, you know what? It's not getting it straight from the Frame Meister. It is going through my hardware encoding box and then going to my TV. So, what I might do is I have an HDMI splitter that I may put in line beforehand because I know the Frame Meister is good. That's for sure. Um, that 
will definitely have a stable output. But the other thing is supposed to be just a pass through my hardware encoder for um, encoding this for the stream, but it may manipulate it in some way or not be a perfectly straight pass through. It may do some analysis on it. It's obviously not adding any lag to it because it's still good, but it may be affecting it in some way that... Whoa, wow, that was good. <laughs> Lucky though. Uh, may be affecting it in some way that is destabilizing. Don't warp, don't warp, don't warp. Yet. Don't warp yet. Um, that I need to figure out why it is not holding a steady... Uh-oh. And I'm dead. 56. See, that's how I did it last time. So... So it should save your wall jump. In. Okay, here's how Arena Foot says Atari Age states that the wall jump ninja does work with Atari Box. Oh, okay. We'll override a slot intended for another game. Here's how the new how the Vox works with Wall Jump Ninja. If you have an Atari Vox, Atari Vox Plus, I have an Atari Vox Plus, or save key, your records will be saved between sessions. Restart your Atari with the fire button held down to reset saved scores. It, so it should save your Wall Jump Ninja score. I don't think it did, because I did turn it off and turn it back on, and it didn't have it. But let's test it out again. Um, so my best is 65, which is awesome. So happy. And let's see if it remembers it. See, it doesn't. Best is zero. It doesn't remember it. I'm just going to play and die and see if it that affects it. Maybe it needs to be kicked into place? No. That's really weird. Restart your Atari with the fire button. Like restarting your Atari with the fire button held down, does that reset all the scores or does it just reset the score for the game you have in the Atari at the time? I'm guessing it does just for the game you have in the Atari because that would be really annoying if it reset all your, all your games, especially if you accidentally had it held down. That is weird, well, it, why it's not working. Because the elevator's a miss, did remember the the score. Let me put that back in for a second. Now this should remember the scores from last time. Um, on all, there they are, the scores are there. So there's nothing wrong with the Atari Vox Plus. that I can tell because it's working on the other game. That's really, really strange. Um, I'll have to look into that because that's kind of disconcerting that it may not work on other games. Um, hmm. You got that from the Atari Age Store page for Wall Jump Ninja. Well, that would be the best place to get it. And if there was a, a problem with that, um, definitely somebody would update it. Um, hmm, maybe I'll post that in the forums, and they can they can see the, the stream. Anyway, let's get on with this. Um, okay, so tactics I have figured out, which you may have already figured out. Obviously, the biggest key is the jumping, and timing the jumping on when you let go of the button. And really, when you let go of the button, is pretty much the exact height that you're going to be leveled off at. It may be a time. There's a tiny bit of delay where you, you do go a, a couple pixels higher when you let go of the button. So you do have to give it a bit of leeway. I do want that eye. The next part that I discovered that is very helpful is there's a bit of extra room 
at the top of the screen. The top of the screen is not the top of the play field. Um, you can go pretty much a whole person's width higher, or height higher. Um, so you do have, see that? I made it right, completely disappeared off the screen. That one I hit the top. But, so the, you have to be very careful with it. Um, oh, I should have went lower there. Um, so that's a tactic too, is that you do have more room than you think at the top of the screen. And that's especially useful for some... Whoa, that was close. Some of the levels... Oh, why am I so low? Get up! Some of the levels where, like here, you have some room. Especially when it gets smaller. That is probably the hardest part so far that I'm dealing with, is when... Um... Uh, I kind of wanted that eye. Um, it's when the spaces get really small. And trying to time those up with the jumps. And not hit the ceiling. I do want that eye. And then my next tactic for getting a high score... <laughs> so far, but immediately dying pretty much right after getting the score... Is staving... Oh, that was dumb. Staving off getting the letters till as long as possible. Um, like the last, the J and the A, so that you can use the warp to your advantage um, to get that extra 10. I think it's 10. 10 extra uh, room levels. Um, the next hardest thing that I'm dealing with those is those plum bobs, which I <laughs> love that name. Those diamonds that go up and down. Um, those are really difficult. You just have to make sure the timing is precise that you're not jumping into them. And a good hint is that when you first make it to a room with one of those plumb bobs that you can see, do not immediately jump for them. They are, they are timed up to kill you if you jump immediately, like if you just keep jumping, they seem to be timed up really well to kill you. So beware, hold off for just a second, and don't immediately jump into the section with a plumb bob. Another one should be coming up pretty soon. There we go. Ooh, that was good. I did that last time too. There we go. I have to. I had to delay it just a little bit. Okay, now we're getting into some hard territory for the opening there. See there, that's when you can use the advan to your advantage. Um, the top of the screen not. Ugh! Tried to do it. Top of the screen not being the top of the screen. I don't know if you have time, Arena Foot, to check out any forum posts about Wall Jump Ninja and the Atari Vox Plus specifically, because I have the Plus. I don't know if that makes any difference um, uh, for incompatibilities, but um, maybe nobody else has encountered this yet. Um, it could also be that my. Oh god. My 2600 maybe is part of the equation. I have a six switch, a uh, light, a light six switch. Um, because sometimes people have posted, oh, I've got a, oh, a light switch, six switch, uh, a heavy sixer, or a Vader, or a very, you know, who, who knows, a Sears version of the 2600 that introduces some little thing that kind of throws it off a bit. Um, hopefully it's not that. And obviously it didn't disable my Atari Vox key completely. I'm hoping it really works with Anguna. Because typing in those numbers is not something 
I look forward to. Ugh. Gotta be careful, but you slide down the wall so quick. Looking for Atari Box info f for you. Thank you. Very much, Arena Foot. Okay. How long have we been broadcasting for? 120. How far did I... What was my score? 65? I want to try and beat 65 at least. And then... Maybe we'll end it there. We shall see. Maybe it thinks my button is pressed down when I'm turning it on. And it's erasing it somehow. Oh, and can you... Because I... Maybe I'll try and... Oh, God. Maybe I'll try and do that. Is to hold down the button when booting it up. Because it can't hurt. Because it's not working anyway. But I just... If you could verify that holding the button down while starting a game only erases the current game plugged in. Not that it would be a big loss that I would only lose data for one game, but I do not want to lose data for all the games. That's for sure. I'll get the J. Uh oh. Oh god. Okay. Fine. I'm fine. We're all fine here. Everybody's fine. That was almost not fine. When I finally made it past the plump, pump, uh, plum bobs, I made it past that, which I almost died on, you get pretty much two chances. Oh. Maybe three. I don't want to do it yet. Not yet. The next one. If I make it. Oh my god. Okay. Go. Okay. Wait. Go. Okay. Just need to get the A if I can make it through this. Jump, jump. Oh. It's close. Oh, found it. There's a bug. Wallaber posted the back this back on 227.16. I'll wait. <clears throat> By the way, there's indeed a bug. With the save key, Atari Vox Plus high score saving loading code. I'm working on a fix now. Oh, is this in relation just to Wall Jump Ninja? Um, which I'm guessing is just for Wall Jump Ninja. Um, doesn't really help. Uh, this cartridge version of Wall Jump Ninja, obviously. Um, I guess for further prints of it, it'll be good. Yeah, just affects this one. Well, unless you can Atar update the Atari Vox key, which I'm not sure if it is updatable. So there is a bug. Okay, well, that's okay. Since I film my play sessions, um... I can remember them. <laughs> I should post my high scores somewhere, keep track of them. Maybe when I get a website up, that'll be a good section to put up, is my high scores, just so I can keep track of them easier. Because some of these games, I'm noticing some slowdown here on some of these things, so quite possibly my hardware encoding box is affecting things. Which is not making me happy. Oh, should I have got that, Jay? Oh my god. That was close. Ah, come on. funny thing in this game is that that wall of electricity is relentless. It doesn't... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yep. My TV cut out again. And I'm dead, because I can't... Because I can't see what's going on on the screen. Oh, that's annoying. Okay, here we go. 
what he said with the new update. Well, it took a while, but here's an updated ROM in all three formats. This fixes the save key issues. Beware, if you have the one version 1 1.0 um, and you play the game on hard, no lava, it's possible that the game will overwrite a byte on the save key that's reserved for assembloids. <laughs> Uh-oh. Hard no lava. Well, I, I would not play hard no lava. I'm not even playing hard right now. Um, and no lava. Why would you play hard no lava? That's a very strange combination. Um, the build resolves an issue and keeps saved out in the proper spot for Royal Gem Ninja on the save key. Uh, interesting. That doesn't sound like the issue I'm having. That sounds more like a bug that he's destroying somebody else's save data. But maybe that's in relation to this. Hmm. Uh, yeah, because I have Wall Jump Ninja on um, 1.1, actually. Um... Let me try out Wall Jump Ninja 1.1 because um, I have it on my um, Harmony cart. Focus. There we go. Let's try that. It's kind of nice that these guys. Um, oops. That these guys release fixes for free that you can download them um, after the fact. Oh, I don't know which one's which. These names are too long. Let's pick the first one. The 1.1 is the updated ROM? Okay. So let's give this a try. Same settings. So is the sound loud enough on this? It's hard to tell, because... Oh, that was terrible. Okay, so I made it to room seven. Um, so, theoretically, if I turn it off and turn back on again, would it work through the multi-card? It should. Let's take a look. Let's see how it does. Come on. Get your crap together. My TV. It's TV. Come on. Hurry up. You guys can see it, but I can't see it yet. Yeah, I'm definitely going to... Um... Oh my god. That was a terrible noise. Um, to hook up the HDMI splitter so that... Um... I can see it better. Hurry up. It's taking so long. There we go. Homebrew. Um, so I can see it better on the TV. Well, that might. Here we go. There we go. Excellent. Need a CRT TV. That kind of defeats the purpose of the HDMI output. But, interesting. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll continue playing on with this um, version since it can save games. Oh, funny. I wonder if I pop in the cartridge after playing this, if it'll register, uh, register the high score that it saved, and then never, never touch it again. <laughs> because it'll never overwrite it, because it doesn't know where to write it. That's a bad bug. Not as bad as it could be, because it's just a high score, but definitely an annoying bug for them to um, probably not since the cart's 1.0. Depends if the writing part of it is the bad part of it, or the reading of the high score is the bad part of it. Because it sounds like what he fixed was it overwrote some of assemblies 
but did it read? It didn't seem to read off assembloids. Not that I've had a high score in assembloids with, with the save key. Um, because I didn't have the save key plugged in on Wednesday when I was playing assembloids. Anyway, we will try that. We, we will put in the, um, the cartridge afterwards, and that would be a very funny thing. If that's your... Oh, God. If you're... Ah! Oh, damn it. If your um, score is stay, saved indefinitely. <laughs> if you never play version 1.1 again. Oh, also, I wasn't looking at the stream, which I should next time. It goes crazy and warps. Um, did it cut out on the stream um, when it went warpy? Because that would definitely tell me whether it's the TV or it's... Well, yeah, if it's, if it's part, partly to do the TV and not getting a, a proper signal to display. Maybe it's this TV. That would be annoying because I just got this TV set up. That is quite an intense uh, display when it's doing the warping. It is a lot of colors going on. And it just freaks <laughs> freaks the TV the hell out. Well, have I not got the eye yet? Oh boy. I should start collecting some more letters here. Before it gets too high. Yeah, I need that eye. Or not. Up. Up. Whoa, that was... Come on, come on, come on. Whoa. Okay, that was good. Barely. I swear one game I played... I had no control over whether I, whether I went into that plum bob or not. Oh, you know what? Also, I, I can tell this... Ha the TV has a setting on the HDMI input that I have it on for auto brightness. So I do need to put this TV into game mode for sure. No cutout, you saw everything. Okay, so that is good. That's good. That means it's not the Frame Meister cutting out, which would make me a little upset. Um, it might have been a, just a setting to correct that, but I, I don't need to change any setting. So that's good. And it's also good that it's not the encoder having trouble with the input because I don't know what I would do then. This is a really good encoder, hardware encoder. So it's possibly just the TV and possibly just a setting on the TV that has auto brightness or um, yeah, auto brightness set or some auto setting that protects your eyes. <laughs> Pretty much. If anybody knows what that is, um, there's settings on TVs that help you out, help you out. They don't really help you out. It actually is terrible. Um, so if you've ever noticed on somebody's TV where a scene is like really bright and the TV all of a sudden goes a little darker because it's bright and then when it brightens up again, the TV goes darker. That's something you do not want set on your television. And that's like automatic settings. Oh, I'm going to get the A accidentally. I don't want to yet. Automatic settings. And usually there's something called game mode that you want to put on for the... Oh, damn it. Oh, you want to put game mode on. Oh, should I do it now? Uh, I don't have the remote control. I won't do it now. Well... I should do it now because then I can play with the warp. So please hold with me. Hold on for a second. <clears throat> oh, I just changed it to Spanish. There we go. Okay. Sports mode, standard mode, movie mode, preference. Stick to preference. Go to advanced picture. Dolby noise reduction. 
off, MPEG noise reduction off, color temperature medium, auto aspect ratio off, picture size natural, dynamic contrast, that's what I do not want. Backlight, oh, Dynalight off, whatever that is, dynamic light, very bad. Okay. Now, okay, that wasn't as bad as I thought. So let's give it a try again. Oh, that's much better. It's not freaking out and changing. Um, actually, the blacks match now. Nice. This is much better. So we'll see if it um, freaks out when I do a warp, if I can actually get to a warp. Well, I'm purposefully delaying the warp. So anybody out there with um, TVs hooked up to Atari 2600s or any game system um, set to your TV, always make sure that anything that is dynamic or automatic or it's anything that adjusts automatically is turned off um, because it also introduces lag into your gaming because it has to do some processing. Um, also, it, the best way to look for it is if it has a game mode and usually that's on really new TVs or like within five years or something, maybe even 10. Uh, and what game mode is, does is turns off all the automatic stuff so that you don't have to even go through it menu by menu. Uh, this one doesn't seem to have a game mode. It's a little bit older of a TV, um, which is good for me because it has so many inputs. It's RF all the way to HDMI and doesn't miss any. It has component, it has composite, it has RF, it has S-video, it has VGA, so I can play my Dreamcast on it. Let's get that J. Um, and that is HDMI, so it can play 2600 all the way to PS4. Okay, now I want the warp. <laughs> Just like you could see it on the Harmony menu, but I could see it. Holding. Also, um, I don't know if anybody out there probably doesn't, you probably don't, but if you're watching this on YouTube later, um, I had meant to ask this earlier. Right now I'm using an Elgato HD60 uh, hardware encoder to do the broadcasting. And in general, it does a great job, as you can see. It does great um, encoding, looks crisp, looks clean. Um, the delay issue, there's no delay issues. Um, it's wonderful, it's great. Um, the only issue is that because the Atari 2600 is kind of demanding, <laughs> If you could say, it's like really, really demanding of, in terms of frame rate. Um, when it wants to do 60 frames a second, it needs all 60 frames a second. Like every frame is precious um, to do all its special tricks, um, like um, color blending, um, um, kind of multi... I don't know what you'd call it. Multi-tasking? <laughs> multi multi sprites. Um, when you're doing four sprites on the screen at once using only two um, two sprites. Or like one sprite multi... Uh, what's a word? Not in my brain right now. Um, like interlaced, interlaced sprites. Where it draws one sprite on one frame and the other sprite on the other frame. bad with the plumb bobs now. As I almost die. Oh, I have to get an A as well? Oh my god. Well, the good news. That's not good news. 61. Okay, anyway. Seem to 
ramble when I'm trying to tell a story. I'm not even telling a story, I'm trying to get to a point. Um, okay, anyway, the, the Atari 2600 is extremely demanding of it, all of its 60 frames. And it needs all 60. And now you might have noticed it on, say, Ladybug when I was playing it the other day, if you look back in the stream. Um, but that was before I made a lot of tweaks. Um, but the best thing to look at was the Harmony Cart um, title, if you look at it, is what it does is uses all 60 frames and it draws the graphic at the top by going back and forth between two separate graphics at 30 frames, one, one, and, one and the other. So it draws each of them 30 times a second but on every other, every second frame. Now, if you're not catching all of those frames, all 60 frames, um, what it does is kind of leaves gaps in the drawing. If that kind of makes sense, it looks like it's kind of broken. The drawing looks broken, or the graphics look broken. Um, so I'll reset it and show you. But right now I have the Elgato HD60, which does, on in general, a pretty damn good job. But I have noticed that it does miss frames from time to time. Not time to time, quite a bit. And I was wondering if anybody out there has a better option for recording and, well, streaming and recording. Atari 26, oh God. Dead. No. Ah, Atari 2600s. Um, because the, what I see on the TV is totally fine. So it's not the Frame Meister. The Frame Meister is handling the 60 frames per second. Doesn't miss one. It looks beautiful. It looks gorgeous. Perfect every time. But and also the pass through on my Elgato hardware encoder looks fine as well. But when it's passed to the computer, it's missing frames. And kind of gets all jumbly. Now, if you look on this game, it doesn't, during gameplay, it doesn't use that, um, use that method. Not even on the, on the electric wall. I'm just looking at it right now, quickly. <laughs> Not even on the electric wall that's coming. It doesn't use um, any harsh 60 frames per second tricks. Um, Multi-interlacing? Multi-sprite? Multi... Sprite? multi uh, I'm trying to figure the word out. But anyway, if anybody has any good suggestions on another hardware encoding that does 60 frames per second, um, external is my preference, not an internal card. I'm sure the internal cards are maybe better at it. Maybe I need, do need to go to that. But I'll probably post this on the Atari Age forums if nobody out there has any ideas. Because it is a very specific need that I have. Oh god, come on, come on, come on, come on. This is not... Oh. I'm really surprised they didn't put in an option to turn off the wall of death that's coming for you. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, I did wait long enough there. Good. I almost slid down the wall and died. Oh, come on. Oh, I have to go down and then do a big jump. Nope. How come I can't do that one? Damn it. That one is getting me so many times. Because you have to... You have to launch off for sure at the top. I'm pretty sure between the two spikes, and then just barely press it and make it across. Yeah, wondering how the wall jump ninja cart will display the high score now. Um, I want to try one more time. And then if I don't make it, I'll, I'll put in the wall jump ninja cart again, and uh, we'll see how it goes. I think my high score is 65. It's more about I know exactly where I'm dying each time. And as soon as I don't die there, I'm definitely, or there, 
I'll definitely make a, my high score. That's for sure. But on the whole, I've got things going pretty good with the stream and the hardware. Obviously, the video stream is is really good now. Uh, I'm really happy that I'm able to use a proper video camera with HDMI output and a proper, you know, professional microphone um, that gives great sound. I think there's a bit of noise though still. I have to figure out, um, you know, adjust the volume levels and see which is which gain is the best to put up because I've got like four different gain places I can put gain in. <laughs> and if you put gain in the wrong place, all you're doing is making more noise rather than more signal. So that's that's easy to test. I don't even have to stream to do that. But for now, it's it's very, uh, very decent. I may even change microphones because this one is it's not really meant for this. And that may help quite a bit. This is a shotgun microphone, which is unbelievably sensitive. And you don't really want unbelievably sensitive when you're screaming and high-fiving when you're playing games. I do want that N. I don't want to delay this too long getting the end because at some point... Come on. That was lucky. That was really lucky. Okay, now I can get the end. And I'm in a pretty good position now in terms of letters. Oh, that was close, but clear two in one jump. Okay, here it is. <gasps> oh! But I have to get two letters still. Okay, one letter. One letter. Damn it! Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Okay. I'm gonna put in the wall jump ninja. Um, unfortunately, I made my high score on this card, which didn't remember it, but I still have a 61 on here. Um, so let's turn this off, turn it back on, and see if the score is red from the Atari Vox Plus by the cart. Okay. So the cart's in. You guys can probably see it before me. Because this is... It does! I knew it! I knew it, I knew it, I knew it! I knew it would! Because he only talked about writing being the bug. That is hilarious. So, if I never use the Harmony card again, this high score should stay here. And never be updated. Even if I beat it, it'll still be 61. I'm gonna try playing just a quick, like, just this. Okay, so I got a 1. Now, it should not be able to write that 1. The best still stays best. I'm going to turn it off, turn it back on again. And, yep, still stays 61. That is hilarious. Okay, what was I going to do? Okay, what I want to do is test out the warping, um, the warping graphics and see if the changes I made to the TV help. I'm just going to go for all the letters right away and not um, not try and miss any of the letters to get. And I'll just get an early warp, which is not really what I want to do to get a high score, but it is what I want to do to test out the freaking out of my TV so that I can actually play after I get a warp because that is not helpful. When, uh, when trying to get a high score, you can't see what you're doing. Not helpful at all. There's the I. Need an N. I know I have to get through get through the plumb bobs to get the next N and the J and the A. Anybody know what the record is out there for this game? I'm sure it's much higher than what I've got because just kind of dumb mistakes I'm making. It's not like, oh, I don't know how to pass this when I do get to a place where I'm trying to pass. Oh. 
A J is in a difficult spot. And all of these, all these levels are planned. It's one of those games that nothing is random. Everything is placed exactly where they wanted to place it. There we go. And just one more, which I know is past the plumb bob. Oh god. Not even doing it. <clears throat> I always think that it's harder to... Not harder, but it takes up a lot of um, space on your cartridge to keep all these levels in um, on ROM. But I guess you don't need too many. There is... You only need a certain number of bits. One bit is for the plumb bob. One bit is, or maybe two bits, are for the spikes. Let's see. Yeah, you could probably do with two bits. Um, one would be an off position. Uh, one would be one. Um, no, you need more than that, because they all move, they move positions all the time. There's this one. There's one where it's a little bit higher up. There's one where it's just one. Yeah, you need at least three bits for the spikes. Then you would need... At least... Two or three, probably three again. Miss the J, of course. That one's hard to get. At least three more bits for the opening position, the opening in the wall, and the size of the opening. Because there's at least, like, three sizes. Oh, that's nice. I love it when that happens. There's so at least three sizes. There's, like, this medium one. And then there's a tiny one. Now, I need to get this A. Come on. <gasps> that A is always trouble! Always trouble. That jump is always trouble, too. Oh my god. Come on. I just want to get an A. Just one A. Come on. Okay, I gotta get this A. There we go. I cut out. Okay. And I can't see. I try and jump, but anyway. Uh, high score on real hardware 66 on emulators 58. Highscore.com. I can beat 66. All I need to do is get an A um, on the track that I was doing, I think. Because I was at 50... 50 something. And I just needed to get through like one hole and then get an A or maybe two holes and get an A. Twin Galaxies website. Interesting. It's not a Twin Galaxies. Um, I don't know how much homebrew they do on Twin Galaxy, but every every game is um, available for that. And the 66s, I'm I'm guessing on this normal level, like not not hard, and with lava on, because it's the default. Most people play on the default level. But anyway, oh, one more thing I want to show you, um, just related to the hardware capture and the 60 frames per second interlaced. Um, I'm going to put my Harmony cart on um, so you guys can see what I'm talking about, that the, the, the problem where it, you know, is going back and forth and it kind of sticks and then goes, uh, 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 uh. this is a good um, representation. So the Atari draws like this, line, skip a line, line, skip a line, line, skip a line like this. And then on the next pass, it draws in the lines it missed. So it's going like this, then this, this, then this. And on a Phosphor CRT television, when it draws this line, it starts disappearing. It goes like it goes away while it's drawing the next line. So it's kind of going like this. But on a CRT, it's, it's Phosphor based, so the decay is very slow. And it's slow enough that it doesn't look like it's disappearing. Um, so it looks like it's a static image all the time and you don't see it going like whoop, 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 like going away one at a time. It's not like on off. It's sort of like an on decay slowly, on decay slowly. Um, 
but on uh, newer televisions, of course, it's not like that. It's like on or off. It can do it, you know, 60, 60 hertz, 120 hertz. So it can do really, really fast. Um, so it needs to do emulation and stuff like that. But anyway, th that's not part of it. That's just explaining how it draws. Um, so the capture device needs to capture every frame perfectly and capture the whole screen every frame. But it's not doing that. It's capturing most of them. Sometimes it misses out and you only see this. Sometimes it misses out and you only see this side of it. Sometimes it gets both for a while. It never misses both where it's all blank, but it's, it's, it's odd. You'll see what I mean. Okay. So here's the uh, Harmony cart, which has a really nice um, top Harmony. And on my television, it's very static. You can see it like this flicker out of the corner of your eye. But on the capture, it's not bad. I would say I'd give it a 90%, 95% looking at my screen. But every once in a while, you see it go warble, warble, warble. And that's it missing one of the frames or one or more of the frames. And I mean, it's acceptable. It's totally fine. It's, it's better than the hapage. Like you can't do it on 30 frames per second. And if you look at a lot of captures on YouTube of Atari 2600 games, um, actually I'll make it full screen. You can take a look a little bit better at it. Um, yeah, you can see the menu kind of going glitch, 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 glitch a little bit. Um, actually, I don't think my full screen is any bigger or not much bigger <laughs> than my side screen. Luckily, I can use my left hand side and move everything over and still have kind of full screen Atari 2600. Yeah, you see it too? Yeah. Um, now, I, what I want to do is get a capture device that doesn't have this glitch. Um, it just needs to be a little bit better. Like from going from 95% to 100% where it gets absolutely every frame. Um, on non-Atari games, this is not a problem. Like a PS4, you wouldn't see it because one, it's doing 60p and this is doing 60i. Um, maybe that's the thing. But I'm right now I'm outputting at 720p out of my Frame Meister. But maybe that's the issue that I need to look at is different settings of the output on the Frame Meister. Maybe to keep passing interlaced out instead of converting to progressive. But anyway, that's probably boring everybody to death. They just want to see the games. But for the people out there who know what the hell I'm talking about, um, I would love to get something that's just a little bit better because I hate things that aren't perfect and I'm almost got everything working perfectly now so that's it for today's uh, live stream of Atari 2600 homebrew make sure you subscribe and like to all the things to twitch to YouTube to Instagram to Twitter to Facebook we're always at uh, we're always at zero page homebrew z-e-r-o P-A-G-E H-O-M-E B-R-E-W. That's way too long to say. You, know, you guys know how to spell. Um, so I'll just say zero page homebrew spelled out. And um, I might do a midweek stream next week, but you can uh, almost always guaranteed to be see us here on Friday at 2 p.m. on Twitch or catch these um, on YouTube when they get put up. So definitely subscribe and maybe click on the bell if you're not getting the alerts to it. And always check out all of our old uh, streams. And this one should be up on YouTube uh, in a couple days. It's much easier now that I don't have to mess, out, mess around with sound. So thank you uh, everybody who's watching uh, and uh, especially Arena Foot and uh, A. Gilbertson. Sorry, it's hard to parse things when it's all together. A. Gilbertson 1977 for tuning in and anybody else who uh, tuned in as well to the live stream and uh, didn't say anything. 
And uh, if you want to see a picture of the new studio setup, um, you can go to the Zero Page Homebrew uh, Facebook page and check it out there. And we will see you later. And I usually post pretty often on all the social media so you can see me in between the days. So I will uh, check you later and um, have a good weekend.